Welcome everybody to Extreme Off-Road Silly Builds and today we're dealing with the 2010 Jaguar CX75 now this has 1,279 horsepower 1,060 pounds feet of torque from a 2.5 litre twin, twin charged inline 4 engine plus a hybrid system on top of that and the vehicle itself now weighs 3,171 pounds came with all-wheel drive standard but now has off-road tyres and off-road suspension and it can now do 0 to 16 2.704 seconds, 0 to 104.667 seconds, and going to a top speed of 251 miles an hour. So yeah, I thought I'd give me another one of these uh, mid-engine hypercars a go, because the ATS GT is uh, still at the top of the leaderboard, and that car is laid out like this. Though obviously this has all-wheel drive standard, so uh, yeah, it has that going for it, but yeah, it's whether or not it can handle all this extra power that it's got going for it while also dealing with obviously the off-road elements but that all-wheel drive system being standard will obviously help because it's something that it's not alien to so uh, yeah big question is though can it be that Peugeot from the previous episode which was blisteringly quick going into joint fourth position with the uh, Porsche 968 I think it is yeah And that car was far quicker than I was expecting it to be, considering it's incredible lightweight and not much in the way of power, whereas this is obviously a far heavier car, but also around twice the power, so uh, yeah, be interesting to see the uh, difference between the two. This is nowhere near as agile as that Peugeot is. Should have straight line speed on this side. But to be honest, I think it's feeling like it's struggling to put the power down. And that is a lot of power to go through those wheels while dealing with the off road elements. As long as it's able to use most of it, that'll be alright. Tricky little sod to keep in a straight line. Very minimal amount of traction on the go. You also have to remember it's not just the horsepower we're dealing with, it's all that torque as well. And a lot of it is instantaneous being a hybrid system. Hundred and seventy mile an hour across the finish line there and a time of 2 minutes 6 seconds point eight five four, so nowhere near as quick as the Peugeot 205 Rally from the previous episode and way off the lights of the ATS GT but it has at least managed to beat the likes of the, uh, the uh, Lancia Fulvia Coupe Rally HF the Ram 2500 Power Wagon Renault 5 Turbo, Volkswagen Touareg R50, Porsche Cayenne Turbo, Alfa Romeo Stelvio and the Volvo 242 Turbo Evolution. So it's quicker than several cars that are meant to go off-road, but it's also slightly behind the uh, Ford Escort RS 1600, Chevrolet Impala SS, Subaru Impreza 22B STI and the Lancia Stratos HF Stradale. So yeah, it's pretty much tucked in between a lot of cars that are meant for going off-road, quicker than several of them but also slower than a lot of them as well and uh, yeah, way down on the leaderboard in comparison to other you know, sports cars, supercars and the like I mean, the likes of a uh, McLaren 720S Coupe is ahead of it uh, as well as an Ital Design Zero Uno uh, and uh, Chevrolet Camaro and uh, Porsche Panamera Turbo Alpine A110 and you know the light and even a Lotus Exceed S so uh, yeah it's uh, nowhere near as quick as I was hoping considering the huge amount of power and the really rather quick acceleration at the end of the day it just felt like it was not able to put that power down while also being really rather quite uncontrollable so yeah lack of control and uh, yeah throwing away a lot of that power in terms of torque and horsepower on uh, nothing at all and just spinning it away really does not help it whatsoever so yes a little bit disappointed but considering it's a huge amount of power and uh, being out of its comfort zone it's guess it's no real surprise that it's as slow as it is 
Nonetheless, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.